on those lines, I think this is something I want to hear your perspective on because for me growing up, I was undersized too. So, you know, everyone has kind of their things that they need to work on to make up for the lack of maybe physical attributes. So Mm -hmm. you being undersized, was there anything that you really had to focus on? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but was there anything based off of like, especially with judo and stuff, it's technique, right? You said you talked about like the intelligence of the sport, having that IQ technique, you know, it being more like a chess match. Was there anything that helped you to kind of counteract not having the physical size to, you know, compete necessarily in certain certain types of sports? Yeah, it's something that I, I still think we, we need to pay attention to as far as like when we recruit kids. Mm-hmm. It, it's like a how do I say this in the right way we need to recruit smart kids <laughs> <laughs> yes like kids that are um for one they're coachable mm-hmm. and two like when you um give them cues or when you give them corrections they're able to process and understand and adjust mm-hmm. that is not across the board something that exists mm-hmm. even at this level you, you think about where I am right now and you think like these guys are just like top level athletes and whatever. It's not, not always the case. It's sometimes it's, they're very physically gifted, but what happens upstairs is not, not matching that, Mm -hmm. you know? And so the, I think the understanding of, so when you're in competition, um, especially all the sports that I played, you need to be able to be within your own head and also be processing and thinking and analyzing all on reaction right Mm -hmm. if you're that kind of hectic kind of panicky intense person in your own brain you're not going to do well at all Mm -hmm. (laughs) so Mm -hmm. if you think about it be let's use wrestling as 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 an example some of the best wrestlers when they wrestle they look like they're relaxed they look like it's it's flowing Mm -hmm. and the people that are intense and like really trying hard and they look like they're getting a workout they're they're usually not that good mm-hmm. and it's it's that that balance or it's that kind of conscious level of processing that is mm-hmm. is the champion's mindset it's not it's not the extreme mm-hmm. person it's not the person that can't get up it's it's that person that can see what's happening and think a few a few steps uh, steps ahead a few plays ahead Mm-hmm. And in every sport, that that's the, that's the case. Mm-hmm. Even if even some of our, you know, all Americans and stuff here, they are the smartest kids. Mm-hmm. They're they're the, they're the most able to see the situations, see things that are gonna happen, and then react to it. They're not sometimes. <laughs> the cool thing about being in my position, where like you see the strength and conditioning side, mm-hmm. if you saw some of our best athletes train, you'd be like, that's not a good athlete. <laughs> you know but then you see them on the court or you see them mm-hmm. on the field mm-hmm. and when the skill and the processing is on display they look like they're a level above everyone when, mm-hmm. when really it's not their physical attributes it, it's their level of processing yeah and so that, that's the one thing that i think if we could find a way to <laughs> the screen or, or or figure out which athletes had that quality i think we'd be we'd be unstoppable Yes. Yeah. No, that's, I, thanks for sharing that perspective because, you know, we see it all the time and it's maybe something that we don't express a lot um, or talk a lot about, but these conversations, that's why I love these conversations so much is because, yeah, just because of how you train and what you do in the weight room, that has nothing to do with game practice situation at all, right? Very it's well. important. We need to have a baseline physical capacity and strength and power and all of that but you don't need to be the top in that category to be the best performer on the field or court and I truly believe that I think a lot of times you know even athletes maybe it's the environment that they're in or whatever they get caught up in like oh we need to be the best in the weight room we need to have the highest max highest vert all of that but at a certain point I think there's a point of kind of diminishing returns where like for your body and what you need to do, your sport, your position, if you do too much of that, I think it almost is counterproductive. Like it'll restrict what you need to do on the field or court. Like, for example, anything like baseball, let's talk about baseball since, you know, you played a lot of baseball. I think there's a point in baseball where 
if you get too strong and you create stiffness, restrictions, you can't do what you need to do, mm-hmm. that's going to actually be detrimental to baseball, right? But there is a point where you can't be too weak, of course. We have to find that balance. Mm-hmm. And I think there's other attributes or factors that athletes really need to consider besides just the physical training and volume of what you're doing to get your body prepared strength wise. Right. So I, I like that you shared that. Do you have any other, any other thoughts about that or where did this develop? Like, is that kind of your approach as you played wrestling, judo, baseball? No, I just, it it was just kind of something that I I noticed um, the longer that I coached. Mm. So you see something like when we have kids in the weight room, for example, you get to really know their personalities and, and their, you know, how they, how they operate. And you see certain people get frustrated at stuff. Yeah. Like I didn't hit that rep or like people across, across the weight room are doing this weight. And, mm-hmm. and it, it turns into like a mental, like <laughs> spiral yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And especially in, in like a team setting, of course, they're going to be competitive, which, which you want, because you, yeah. you kind of want them to be like raising the level for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes it turns into a, into a negative energy mm-hmm. and it's already a stressful environment. Like physically, it's just still stressed no matter what you, you're mm-hmm. doing for training. It's still stressed. Mm-hmm. But if you turn that mental stress into a negative, yeah. like your, your weight room time now, I have to perform. I have to be perfect. Yeah. It's, it's like you said, it's diminishing your turn, right? It's not, yeah. it's not doing what we want it to do. Yeah, so it, yeah. I think it just developed from, from just observing Mm-hmm. my athletes and observing how people process what, what's happening around them. That's, that's where it started. And I really started to think like, how important is this part of athletics? Cause I used to think uh-huh. like strength and conditioning, if you work hard, you're going to perform better. Uh-huh. And I still think that, mm-hmm. but I also think <laughs> maybe the mental part of the, of the game is even more important to, to an athlete's success. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's all questions and you know like none of us will have the full answers but it's interesting because i feel the same way as you the more that observe right and see different situations athletes kind of progress and i think the more that you get to see like longitudinally like when you mm-hmm. see because you've been there for over three years which we'll talk about but when you get to see it after multiple seasons see kind of the athletes go from maybe freshmen now they're going to be seniors right when you see all of that and you're kind of observing I think it's natural for people who are really interested to learn to have more questions, the more that we observe and experience. Right. And then you start to piece together a little bit more of the pieces of the puzzle. And I think that's, what's super valuable. So talking about observing all of this, right. And coming up with, you know, what is, what does each individual or athlete or team, what do they need to focus on? Right. And how can I contribute the strength and conditioning piece to that puzzle? (laughs) 